Hi, and welcome back to Bounce Board with me, Tiff Hall. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I'm recording this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I pay my respects to elders, past and present. It's the most wonderful time of the year, but can also be the most expensive time of year. So let's talk about how to do Christmas on the cheap. Now, Christmas for me, I like to mix it up. Last year, I spent Christmas in Bali with my family, my sister, my brother, and I'm really lucky that my sister and I were pregnant at the same time and we have kids at the same age. So there's lots of chaos of little ones running around and it's always great. But sometimes we go to Sydney for Christmas with my husband's family or sometimes I go to my mum's here in Melbourne. Um, This year we are going to mum's because she has the longest table that fits us all. But sometimes I host and my go-to meal that I like to make is always fresh salmon. Nothing beats this on Christmas Day. It's usually really hot. This is something really fresh. You can do it on the barbie even. Um, So that's what I like to to do on Christmas and it's always a great day. I'm really excited about Christmas this year. I cannot wait. So how do I get the salmon? I'm one of those people who isn't organized. I will go the day before and wrestle the crowds and get my salmon the day before. Um, I'm not into having catering or anything like that. I like to cook myself and have all that love seeping into the food and I love feeding my family. I just love it and it's always hands-on. My husband's really good in the kitchen so he's always there helping me. He's a better cook than what I am and he's not afraid to tell everybody I'm the better cook. I'm the better cook. So that's kind of how we roll Christmas Day. So I have some tips for doing cheer on the cheap. Number one, embrace the fruit and veg. Think seasonally. Summer has so many delicious fresh fruits and veg to offer. Berries, melon, grapes, carrot, cucumber, and cherry tomatoes are some firm faves. If you keep an eye on what's in season, you'll usually find it's cheaper and more readily available. If a healthy dip is your snacking centerpiece, bulk it out with veg sticks for dipping. Fruit skewers are also a quick and easy sweet treat. They look really beautiful on the table too, and it won't throw out your healthy eating plan either. If you're firing up the barbie, make a quick batch of my delicious grilled pineapple skewers and vanilla yogurt. I'll put a little link to that recipe in the show notes. Let's talk dips for days. If you're buying some dips from the supermarket, read the label and choose dips without added sugars, artificial preservatives, or too much fat. Store-bought pesto dips can be especially bad for this. Alternatively, you can make your own dips at home. Decrease the meats. Limit it to one meat dish, max, and bulk out the rest of the table with Big and bright salads and dishes of mixed veg and pulses. Gosh, it looks so good on the table. Sharing is caring. If you're struggling to balance the time and budget to cater for a huge party, make it a sharing affair. Ask everyone to bring a delicious dish. Just be sure to coordinate it so you don't end up with four slaws. Trust me, speaking from experience, okay? Coordinate your sharing. Freeze. Nothing wrong with some strategic frozen goods in your menu. If you're feeling fruity with the desserts, why not try frozen berries instead of fresh for dishes like pavlova or trifle? Frozen will save cash and fridge space. Plus, you can stock up ahead of time. Punch up. Alcohol is an added expense your fruit punch might not need. So if you're a bit strapped for cash or trying to avoid empty booze calories. Just make a mix of fruit juice, sparkling mineral water with chopped fresh fruit and mint. Cut back on the nibbles. We love being generous, but that doesn't mean you have to buy four wheels of cheese, six baguettes and a deli's worth of cold cuts just to satisfy people. And they never even really eat it, do they? Sometimes less is more. For a cheap, easy and healthy canapé crowd pleaser, try my spiced cauliflower bites. Ooh, they're delicious. Downsize. 
If you're really strapped for cash, consider hosting a smaller event like a brunch, picnic or morning tea instead, instead of a big lunch or dinner. Plan the protein. You don't have to go the whole hog to have a great time. Having a simple roast chicken or ordering the perfect portion of pre-sliced ham instead of a massive leg are simple catering swaps that will save money and save on waste. Love a leftover? We tend to over cater when we cook for others. I do. So why not plan your leftovers into your meals in the days after? I'm talking salads with leftover ham, wraps with leftover hummus and roast veggie sandwiches. Okay, so now I want to share with you some fun recipes for a healthy Christmas. Eggnog French Toast. Yum. This has the eggnog taste from cinnamon and ground nutmeg and vanilla extract, but is super healthy. So delicious. A great way to start Christmas morning. Christmas Punch. My Christmas punch has cranberry juice, orange, pineapple, strawberries, um, some peaches, some fresh mint leaves, ice and lots of sparkling water. So that's a really nice punch Um, and I can give you the link. It's on the TXO website in the show notes. Need something quick to power you through the day on Christmas and you maybe don't want to ruin beautiful Christmas lunch? Try a Christmas pudding smoothie. This one's so good. You can whip this one up with milk, some of my Get Up and Glow collagen powder, orange zest, cocoa powder, dark chocolate, Greek yogurt and ice. Blitz it and voila. It's so much fun and it's just going to tie you over. A main event which I just love, is roast turkey, maple sweet potato mash and greens. This is a great main meal. But for dessert, I can't go past my Christmas trifles, which are really easy to make. Um, You basically place oats and coconut in a small food processor and pulse until fine. Add the maple syrup, pulse again to combine and divide into glasses. Then you spoon half of the yogurt over the crumbed mixture, rinse out the food processor bowl, add raspberries, blend until smooth and spoon over the yogurt. Add mango, remaining yogurt and top with a cherry. And then you just serve it. Perfect. It's so delicious and it's easy to make. So I hope this has helped and you'll be adding one of these delicious recipes to your Christmas table. Okay, just before you leave, you know I love answering questions, so keep sending them in. Now, Amy has asked, I've been doing well with going to the gym lately, but we're about to go on a family trip to Byron Bay and I'm worried I will lose motivation to do it and eat and drink way too much, lol. (laughs) Do you have any tips to stay motivated to work out when you're on holidays? Yes, you got to keep moving. It's a non-negotiable. When you move, you have exercise satisfaction and it's proven you are less likely to undo your hard work by overeating. So no matter what happens, do some kind of movement every day. For me, I talk logistics with my partner about fitting it in because holidays are busy. You want to see everything. You want to do everything. And it, the kids, it's it can be really, you need a holiday after the holiday because it can be so busy, right? So I talk to my partner and say, okay, can I go for a run in the morning? You do brekkie with the kids and then I'll have the kids in the Arvo and you can go do your thing if that's gym or you want to go for a walk or something. Or we'll work in a bushwalk with the kids, beautiful bushwalks around Byron Bay or play cricket on the beach with the kids. Work, play and activity into your holiday. Kids are a great way to keep you fit. Remember, holidays don't need to be marathon sessions either. So I'm not talking like let's go and do an hour. It's a quick 20 minutes to maintain the habit and ritual so you can hit it harder when you get home. I love getting up 20 minutes earlier before the kids get up. I do a quick TXO workout. It's done before everyone's up and then I can enjoy the day and it's out of the way. Then it sets the healthy intention for the day and I know I'm going to be good. I'm not going to overeat. I'm not going to fall off the wagon and it's going to work out for me. This next question is from Ryan. Hi, Tiff. My wife keeps saying that she wants to get in shape for the new year and I always tell her she is perfect. Oh, you're so sweet. But she is hell-bent on becoming a gym junkie. I was thinking of getting her a gym membership for Christmas, but I don't want her to think that she needs it. What are your thoughts? Now, I love the idea. 
it shows you're listening to her needs and that you support her goal to get fit. I think that's really important. And I also think it depends on the type of gym membership. So if it's a really hardcore gym focused on weight loss and that it's no pain, no gain kind of mentality, then that's probably not going to be right. I would look, if I were you, I would look to find a boutique gym that has a great supportive community connected to it, really inspiring gym owners and trainers that work there. And that could work really nicely for her, I think. Maybe get a gym membership for you both and you can train together and support each other. That would be really lovely as well. And finally, I have a question from Kim. She says, hi, Tiff. I'm really trying to eat healthy, but I have a long commute and I get so hungry for a sweet treat in the afternoon at around 2 p.m. I'm constantly falling off the wagon on work days. What can I do? So firstly, I would say to you, assess your breakfast and lunch. Why are you so hungry at 2 p.m.? Is there enough protein in your breakfast and lunch to keep you full for longer? So maybe you need to add more protein into your breakfast and lunch. Next, are you drinking enough water? Dehydration can be mistaken for hunger. Thirst and hunger can feel like the same sensation. So make sure that you're hydrated. Fail to prepare and prepare to fail. So make sure that you have healthy snacks on hand. SOS snacks, I call them. Prep some healthy commute snacks. Veg sticks and dip. Homemade chocolate trail mix. A mini wrap. Something that's going to just tie you over. And my last tip is something that I I do at my desk. And it's called coconut oil pulling. So you just have a jar of coconut oil on your desk. Put a teaspoon in your mouth and just swish it around your mouth for 30 seconds to a minute. Swish, 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 swish. And then just spit it out into a tissue. And that will stave off the craving. So it just cleanses your palate. It gets rid of bacteria in your throat. And you won't feel like chocolate or sweet treats after you do the coconut pulling. So there's some of my tips. I hope they're helpful. Thanks so much for listening to Bounce Forward. I love having your company. So please DM me on Instagram at tiffhall underscore XO and let me know what topics you'd love me to cover. Don't forget to rate and review me on your podcast app. Speak soon. Happy days.